come to the funding of the Auckland Regional Migrant Services. I um, would like to <coughs> recognise in, in the gallery uh, Mary Dawson and some of your board members. Uh, we've heard from um, Ms Dawson before at this committee, oh, well, yeah, previous committee. Um, right, welcome uh, Lou and Graham. And Claire. Uh, can I give my apologies from Dean? He's not here today. Okay, that's fine. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, well, we'll take the paper as read, but just a, a quick bit of, back, bit of background. Um, <coughs> when the uh, Regional Strategy and Policy Committee met earlier in the month, um, and um, uh, Mary Dawson, Dawson from Arms and uh, Dame Susan Devoy presented, um, we the uh, committee resolved that um, staff look into uh, do, undertake an urgent report to uh, report back to this committee looking at options to um, consider whether there's any possibility of reallocating money um, to support the arms trust so um, that was the main, that was the first point and the second point was um, that the chair council would engage with the ministry of business innovation and employment uh, to discuss um, further options in terms of direct service provision, which I think is something that's still to occur. So the purpose of this paper was to report back to, the, to this committee on the uh, results of our investigations. Um, and uh, as you can see from the paper, um, we, we've, we've done quite an exhaustive review of um, existing operational commitments, um, uh, looking across the entire operations uh, division. And uh, unsurprisingly, uh, all of our monies are um, committed to, with existing uh, projects and, and commitments. And uh, the uh, only area, and, and there's also, that's not including uh, um, efficiency savings uh, activity, which is also needs to be accounted for in terms of the long-term plan and commitment. Uh, so the, what, what we have identified is, is the Regional Community Grants Funding Scheme, which was um, uh, signed off by the um, uh, Community Development and Safety Committee um, later than last month, which is currently being considered. That's got a total pool funding of $175,000, and uh, there is a possibility for this uh, committee to consider allocating up to the amount that's requested by ARMS, which is up to $120,000 from that pool of money, but that would have the effect of removing the total pool um, from those organisations who have um, are in the process of submitting applications to be considered. Thank you. So, um, can I move the recommendation? I'm happy to move those happy recommendations. Happy to move and seconded by Councillor Nye. Right, open for questions or discussion. Councillors. Councillor Cooper. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I mean, I just want to follow up on that. Um, other people have followed the process, and I mean, I'm sure other people will now say, oh, <coughs> you know, the previous item, um, people weren't seemingly in the line either, but um, this isn't our core business, and providing toilets is. Um, I'm really concerned that there's very little money in this regional community grant fund anyway, and if we reduce it, it makes it even harder for other organisations that are willing to go through the proper process. Um, that's what concerns me. Um, is there any ability for, I mean, it may be too late, for, it may it currently be too late for ARMS to apply to that fund. Is it not too late? So has that been explored <coughs> that they go through that process like everybody else? Um, through the chair, um, yes. I mean, it's uh, that's certainly an option, and it's already on the table as, a, as another possibility. Okay, you. Councillor Casey. Um, a couple of questions, Graham. First of all, um, what luck did you have with the government asking them to transition from their exit of funding of this fantastic organisation? Well, I understand that's something that's been followed up by the, the Mayor's office, um, and uh, I don't think conversations have occurred yet, have they? What? Claire? Through the Chair, as I understand it, uh, a, mayor from, a letter from the Mayor has gone to the Minister, and 
as a result of that, uh, James, who's in the Mayor's office, is talking with the Ministry to follow up on the action around Councillor Wood and the Mayor meeting with the Ministry for Business, Innovation and Employment. Can we have an update from James? Is he, is he here? He's not here. He's not here. My second question is, this allocation is one third of what ARMS has requested to enable them to function without staff cuts and without cuts to programmes. Okay, now, regardless of what you think of the government pulling out of this programme, what will this amount mean for ARMS? Well, I don't think we're at uh, liberty to speak for ARMS, but I do recall when um, <coughs> Uh, Mary and Dame Susan uh, presented to the Regional Strategy and Policy Committee earlier in the month. They outlined some of the uh, implications. In other words, there would, there would be a cut to both staffing and programmes, even with this lesser amount of 40,000. So uh, I think I want to appeal to my colleagues that often we're left to pick up the slack, but this is core business, Councillor Cooper. This is where migrants and refugees come. And what the government's... Am I, oh no, this is questions. Are we, are we, am I allowed to do this right now? Because it will come out now, it will come out later. I don't really mind. I'll carry on. This is where migrants and refugees come. And what this means, the, the government's leaving them in the lurch if we don't step in. And that's what we're doing. I make no, no bones about it. But if we put in some money, and this is just some money, this is just not enough money, at least there's a leverage point for the mayor to go to the minister and say, right... The ratepayers are paying 40,000. What are you doing? We can't leave them alone. This, these are not skilled migrants, Councillor Cooper. These are the, Madam Chair, the migrants. Madam Chair, could you please ask Councillor Casey the member not to do that? Councillor Casey. This is. Councillor Casey. This is. Casey this is. Councillor we have Casey. a progressive could resettlement you, programme, one of the best in the could country. You talk and this to is the putting it at risk. Councillor Casey, <laughs> could you talk to the recommendation, which is to allocate the yes. funds? Thank yes. you. Not make it personal. I've Thank done you. it. Thank you. <laughs> right. Oh, Council Fletcher. <laughs> Thank you, Madam <clears throat> Chair. Um, I, I note the Mayor is present, and I, my, my question was going to follow on, and um, I have, I'm perhaps coming from the same place as Councillor Casey. The reason that this council is being put into this situation is because the government is changing its policy. We recognise the government is trying to have more skilled <coughs> migrants, mm. but we also know that ARMS was established because we knew that there was a gap for refugees and particularly unskilled migrants. The successful integration brings many, many benefits to all Aucklanders and all New Zealanders. So what we have identified is a gap in the government's policy of the transition as we move forward. Now, when we had the, the, the debate last time, it was around, and I, I was happy for the Mayor's office to be involved, but I also wanted senior officers to be involved because I wanted some accountability on this. I am not an enemy of the government. I am a supporter of the government, but the government has made a mistake <laughs> in failing to understand the transitionary provisions that were required for arms. And that was the point that Dame Susan DeVoy highlighted to us. And I don't think she's an enemy of the government either. Mm -hmm. So what I want to know is what the follow-on has been in terms of discussion with the minister, um, whether there has been any officer-level um, dialogue uh, with, with government officials, but maybe, and I'd like to reserve my speaking rights on this, Madam Chair, but maybe the Mayor can give us perhaps some guidance at this particular point. We, we are challenged with advocacy on this, whether we fund it or, or arms exist, they do a superb job. Uh, we do not want to see them move from the premises they have. We do not want to see good people like Mary Dawson, who is here, today with staff, we do not want to lose these people because they make a huge contribution to our community. But what we do want to see is government responding in the appropriate way. So, Madam Chair, if you could indulge me in terms of requesting that the Mayor give us an yep. update on the negotiations that have taken place. Absolutely. 
Uh, so, Madam Chair, um, thank you, and um, uh, councillors. Um, and I want to acknowledge Mary, uh, who's uh, there. So, councillors, you'll see if you look reasonably close, I'm actually the co-patron of, right. of arms. And so I need to declare that for a start. Um, secondly, um, I was a part of the Manuka City Council that, in effect, drove the establishment of it, and the first patron, um, and a continuing patron for some time, was Collindale. And, of course, um, the, the South... Um, what was the leading edge of uh, immigration in many ways. It's where the Dawn Raids were held uh, before there was Dawn Raid, the music label. Um, and uh, so, you know, we, we were front and centre and we felt that we needed an organisation that would help people settle much, much better than what was being achieved. In the end, the government supported that and put fairly significant and consistent and regular funding in to help the operational side. And what we've now seen is, is the government, of course, reposition that and sort of go from one position to the other without, I think, really covering off its options. Um, the discussions that I need to have, <coughs> Councillor Chris, with the Minister are being established. I haven't had discussions as yet, so I need to disclose that. As you can imagine, it's not easy, and I want this to be a face-to-face -face discussion. It's not one of those discussions where you can just... Um, have a five-minute catch-up with the Minister. It's actually a discussion about philosophy and principle because the government's view is that it is important for them, Sorry. and boy, I agree with this side of it too, to uh, really spend what resources they have in this area to settle and better direct the investments that are coming in from the business migrants, and that's great. But in doing that, um, they, they have indicated that they feel that the community could basically pick up the slack left by <coughs> arms in terms of the migrant settlement work. And I totally disagree with them. Me too. Um, you know, and I, I'm pleased that, that you've picked up the sentiment, Councillor Chris, that this organisation have done outstanding work. And if they were to go and fold, and, and that's the danger here, um, so the recommendation is, is basically in place to enable them to continue on while we negotiate with the government and at least get a halfway house going with the government where they might put some of their funding in one direction but also cover off the work that they have been backing that arms do in migrant settlement. Now, of course, it's very timely because in the, <laughs> in the last year we had 26,800 <coughs> new migrants arrive in our city. Um, and, and I suspect that's an undercount. We're good at undercounting migrants in Auckland. Some of them do not want to be counted. Mm -hmm. um, but we have, we, I believe, we have an undercount. And so we, we have worked pretty closely in this space without actually picking up the full dollar. And the danger is that we get looked to as being the first port of call rather than a complementary port of call. And I understand the nervousness around this chamber. Oh, God, where does it end? Uh, but I, I rather think that there is a job for us to do in backing the government in the primary role they have in this space. And uh, so um, if this is a, a position, a recommendation position that gives us some breathing space, an opportunity to further engage the government, I'll help you. I mean, my expectation is I'll see the minister in the next two or three weeks. And so I should be in a position where I can report back to you in fairly short order. Uh, so that we get this situation worked out or not. And it will be a fairly blunt discussion with the Minister, and that's why it needs to be face-to-face. -face. Um, you know, by and large, um, you know, we, we, we accept <coughs> that the government's absolute role in this place is to have its own policy setting, and that's fine, and we've had to suck up a lot of change and a lot of redirection. Uh, but this is heart and soul Auckland, and it's different from any other part of the country. Uh, and in some parts of our region, it's different to other parts of Auckland. So, uh, Councillor Chris, uh, I, I can't give you an assurance that the Minister is going to review um, his position. Uh, but I can give you an assurance that I'll try my level best to um, encourage the Minister. These are not big sums of money in the overall scheme of things, and certainly not in the area of immigration. But if the government don't have the overarching and critical role to play here, <coughs> And we don't. Who does? And the community's not going to be able to fill the gap because it's too disparate. So, councillors, all, all I would ask you to do is give 
give me a little bit of breathing space and enable me to, uh, to do the work that, that I'm quite confident I'll be able to achieve with the Minister to get a little <coughs> bit of slack here, and back arms who do very, very, very good work in the face of not anyone else or any other organisation basically doing similar. So if it can be a, you know, sort of a, uh, can I report back to you next month, I, I would love to do that. And at that point in time, I should have had uh, those good discussions with the Minister. And, uh, and we should be able to give arms, uh, hopefully, some degree of confidence going forward as a consequence of those discussions. So, Councillor Chris, I just ask that, that you support the recommendation and give us a little bit of breathing space on the basis that I suspect we will have another update report in a month. Madam Chair, I, I, I thank the, the, the Mayor for his response. What, what I wonder is whether or not the mover and the seconder could consider a D, because I, I, I would like there to be some paper trail that records fact that there is some discomfort with the fact that council have been put in this situation and that there is a view that the government um, does need to step in and make some transition <coughs> arrangements here. So uh, I'm, I'm really in your hands and, and those of the mover and seconder that this, there is further action that I had hoped would take place before now and I'm sure that um, whether it's Councillor Crum or Councillor Cashmore or, or yourself, um, would, would support the Mayor in going to Wellington and actually trying to resolve this issue. This is a really important social issue for so Auckland for the future. If you have, um, particularly, we've had a chat today earlier about youth, but if you have disaffected uh, young people coming to, to New Zealand that have been traumatised for whatever circumstances that they've come from and they don't have that successful integration and they don't have that support, there will be social problems and social consequences for the future. So I think <coughs> that this is one that we have to take seriously. We do need to have that dialogue with government and I would like to see a D there to the effect that we need government to support and fund these <coughs> arrangements. Councillor Fletcher, I believe we did move something at the regional <coughs> strategy That's right. uh, meeting already. So if D just notes that, because it was Councillor Wood and the Mayor, I think the That's good. There, there was, was some difficulty was something about the Mayor being patron, or there was some, some issue I remember I think discussion there was, around there, it. There was something in that recommendation. So, Maybe, so Madam Chair, could I suggest that we, we have a couple of councillors? I'd like to suggest Councillor Crum. I think she, she's aware of this issue and uh, if she could so support Councillor Wood on this one and perhaps um, the ongoing dialogue that the Mayor will have. But I, I would really like to see <coughs> some specific point that this will land uh, engaging the government on their responsibilities here. So uh, are you happy with that, Councillor Crum? Can we put your name down then? Okay, so no, can we have a D... Um, just recognising the previous Through the chair, um, I think you're referring to recommendation B from the previous committee discussion and what you could do is you could note that Councillor Crum be added to that because it specifically yeah, so, so requests the chair of the that, committee. Yeah. So the previous recommendation from regional strategy and policy, recommendation B, uh, through the chair can I suggest that you add Councillor Crum to that. So just request the chair, request the the chair of the committee along with Councillor Crum. Okay, well we can get support the of the Mayor, we, so effectively Can we put the, um, recognising the uh, recommendation B from the regional strategy and whatever it was, policy committee, um, and adding Councillor Crum to the meeting. Okay. Are you? Can we add that further? I think Councillor Casey would be appropriate in there as well. Well, yep. Okay, so can we put that then as a D? Okay, Councillor Lee. Yes, um, thank you, Madam Chair. The, the resolutions or the, or the recommendations as they stand are essentially uh, a blank cheque and um, an open-ended commitment, really. Now, I know that's not the intention of, of the Mayor and the governing body from what the Mayor has said, but as it stands, that is an open-ended commitment and I would prefer, uh, all due respect to Councillor Crum, I, I, um, 
I don't think the ratepayers are going to be that, that much reassured by adding another councillor, uh, putting another councillor on the plane. Uh, I want to see um, some Would you say the same a statement about there, Casey, a, a statement there that this is yeah. a temporary measure until we get agreement, subject to agreement from the government, because otherwise, uh, we want to be open and honest about it. This is just another example of the central government cleverly mm. externalising, dumping its costs, its responsibilities onto the Auckland Council. And when the rates go up, um, and we know how controversial that is, um, and which, which is very divisive for this council, when the rates go up, um, the government will be among those criticising the council for its lack of efficiency. So uh, let's be very careful about the small open-ended commitments because they stay and they grow. So I would like to see some sort of qualification there um, that gives some assurance that this generous measure on behalf of the council, um, responsible approach, filling the gap and the government's responsibilities is a temporary one until we get a, a, a agreement from the government. There's no point in the government making statements about taking more and more refugees for whatever political reasons um, without giving the backup to look after those refugees. Um, and councillors, I would remind you that the MB mm. funding is through till the end of this year. So hopefully those visits to the minister or talks with the minister may be able to pay off before that. So, yes, Graham. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to make the point that the recommendation is for the financial year 15-16 only. Yeah. And uh, the previous discussion was also to um, work uh, with arms through the process for looking at annual planning funding on a more of a regular basis. Uh, I guess that's in addition to working with central government and, and advocating through that. So I think that's just a wider context to counsel these points. Yep. I would like to see that expressed, otherwise I'll vote against Well, it. the thing yeah. is, it was, ha ha it was actually expressed in the Regional Strategy and Policy Committee on the 8th. And all we, we had that in, please, or refer to that. Well, I have. It's in there in C. D. C, <clears throat> Through the Chair, perhaps what you could do to clarify the difference between A and C is that um, A <coughs> is specific to the 15-16 <coughs> financial year because C is specific to 2016-2017. Okay. And, and Madam Chair, the, the other point that is missing on the D is that it, it's, there, is, there is an immediate <coughs> need for this to take place. So I'd like some sense of urgency or... Um, that, I mean, we don't want this going on into next year. We, we want that engagement as soon as possible. Mm. Well, we can put that at the end of 16, D. Can yeah. we put, can we put at the end of D, the ASAP meeting to be held as soon as possible? Right. Okay, is everybody clear what they're voting on? Oh, Councillor no, Cooper. Oh, thank you. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, I'd like to, to insert oh, the word I one off grant in there to give some assurance, otherwise I'm... I, it's I'm only not, for this year, yeah, Councillor. Yeah, it's yeah, only that, for this year. Of course it's for this year, that's the only basis we can fund. However, I think we need to signal that this is a one-off and it's subject to the government coming to the party. Otherwise, we don't have any leverage well, councillor, to go to we Wellington. Councillor, we, we can't actually state that it's the government coming to the party because we don't know whether they are going to no, come well to the party. I, that's why I suggest that we put the word one off grant in. Ma Madam Chair, on that point, I, I have great confidence that Councillor Crum and Councillor Casey in interpreting the resolution here would express that very clearly uh, to the government. It's all that right. it's all right. the, the, the seriousness of the plight of this particular situation and the ability uh, for funding to be for just this uh, financial year under consideration. So uh, I, I'm, I, I would, through you, Madam Chair, say to Councillor Lee, I, I think it's in the advocacy that uh, we, we commend to Councillor Casey and to Councillor Crum to take these issues very seriously to government. I think, I'm not, I'm I think they have that. I think they understand that message. Yeah, Councillor, uh, 
Right. May, ma Madam Chair, just, could you just clarify, rather than an, uh, 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 is the governing body unwilling to put the word one off in the... Point of order, I'm the mover and I'm unwilling. I think it may, we've made it clear. Are you happy well, with uh, the D? Councillor Clow as the mover. Councillor Nye as the seconder. And I'm Thank happy you. with the change in A. Uh, we've, I think we've um, spoken about this quite a bit now. I'm quite keen to get on Madam to... Madam Chair, I did have my hand up and you did indicate that I could speak yes, before right, Councillor Lee yes, butted in. Actually, Thank you. Excuse me. Sorry. Yes, but you have actually spoken on no, the side I asked of a report. question, Madam right. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Um, I, my concern with this is, look, it is valid. I did say it's not core business, but it isn't something we shouldn't be involved in. We do have a community development um, arm. My concern is that this is 22% of this very meagre regional community grant funding, and I doubt that any of our staff would ever recommend in those um, grants that one organisation would take 22% of the whole. And that is my concern for the rest of the applicants who are getting in the line, putting in their applications, quite lengthy, a whole process they have to go for, and there's a reduced amount. You know, and there will be a lot of applicants. These are always oversubscribed. And that's my concern. There's a whole lot of other groups out there that do equally good work, equally good work as arms do, and necessary work in the social sector. And now we're you know, it really makes their efforts hardly worthwhile, and I think that is unfair. So I'm asking um, that some work be done, if, if through you, Madam Chair, by our finance um, director to actually find that 40,000 somewhere in this organisation to put that back in, because it is really unfair to the other organisations. Um, I know it's a small amount, but at the end of the day, there's all those other organisations that do good work that will now miss out. Okay, I think um, Mr Bodman's been looking at this okay. since the last meeting. I know, I know. So I'm really keen to move on. We've got local Madam board Chair, people. Madam Chair, I just want to make, make one point. Well, Councillor Lee, you're actually <coughs> not on the speaking list at the moment. Councillor Darby. Very, very briefly. Uh, really this, trying to move yep, on. This. Absolutely, and I just want to address that this is not core business. I'd just like to remind uh, councillors that all of us signed up. There was no dissent on this particular part of our budget where we allocated a quarter of a million dollars, at least in the 16 year, to AT to support migrant attraction, to $250,000. So it's definitely, we've confirmed this as our core business. And I don't know what the full 10 year is, but it could be as much as two and a half million dollars if you uh, multiply that out. So we have confirmed this as core business and this is part of that core business. Thank you, Councillor Darby. Right, I'm going to bring this to a close and put the recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? No. Record my vote again, Aaron, please. Thank you. On vote voices. Thank you, Graham and team. Claire and Lou. And